All clear, Brandon. We are live. Check the team. Anybody out there? <laughs> Brandon, you need to blow your nose, bud. Any bat, any bats in the cave? <laughs> it is spring. That is a really dangerous thing to do around yeah. here. A lot of pollen in the air. We still probably shouldn't open up a national call talking about that kind of thing, though. That's not acceptable behavior from a professional environment, Spivey. You know that. Well, everybody keeps waiting for you and Casey to grow up. Mm -hmm. I know. Peter my Pans. Mom, my mom says the same thing. Yep. <laughs> We're waiting to, oh. buddy. We're waiting to. We are too. I don't know. I don't know that I really want to grow up. Mm -hmm. oh. That would suck. Then you got to get a real job. I'll Although... tell you one thing. <laughs> After the past couple of days of rocks meetings we've been in, guys, we've got, uh, yeah. we've got a lot of really cool stuff coming up that's going to be well worth to hang around to be a part of. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yes, it is. We got a good one today lined up. In the final stretch, we should say, Scott Summers, unveil. Isn't that our new terminology? What's up, buddy? You How you doing, good, guys? Man. Got the new haircut. <laughs> good. I like it. Uh, new office, new haircut. Yes, I'm right, fired up, ready to go. I hear you, baby. It's, it's um, That's a good haircut, too. It's not like some COVID cuts we've seen where <laughs> somebody actually cut their hair themselves or... Nope. There wasn't any COVID forever. cuts around here. I don't know how it was down there, but there's no COVID cuts to be had. So no, I'm happy about this. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, it's not like the Billy Idol thing, though. That was all in. Right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was, I was blown away at how awesome that was. Oh yeah, was so we, that's what we should have played. We need to start making our videos. Spivey, take a note. I'm trying to remember this. We need to make our videos as relative to our speakers as we can. So yeah. if, if there were, if there was a video where we could show Scott up there, just killing it uh -huh. during Symmetry's Got Talent. Wasn't that Symmetry's Got Talent? Is that what we called that? Sure was. Was it? I felt like you got robbed. You should have won a Miata. Well, there was also, there was Symmetry's Got Talent, but wasn't there uh, Symmetry Rocks or something like that too? Maybe or? it was Symmetry Rocks. It, it was actually fitting though, because there was a solo act that won, the one car, you know, the two seater, and we had a band of like four or five. So right. logistically, it was going to work. Yeah, that, that's always going to like cause problems in the band. Egos are going to get involved. Yeah. Next thing you know, there's drug addictions to deal with. And it's all over a Miata. Funny that's story about that Miata, um, by the way. We gave that Miata away on stage. If, if you weren't there, you missed, you missed the conference where we had, had the Miata out on stage, <laughs> which was supposed to be Reggie's, Reggie's, uh, Reggie's salesmobile, right? Yeah. And um, we had a Symmetry's Got Talent contest to, to the top winner was going to win the, the, the Miata. It was like a 94 Miata too. <laughs> we, we found it on Craigslist. It was like, <laughs> like 2,500 bucks. And uh, it's a sweet little Miata actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we definitely did some burnouts and some donuts around here before we, before we brought it to conference just to make sure that it you know, was reliable. And uh, <laughs> the agent that won it, was that awesome uh, violin fiddle, player. fiddle yeah. player? Did a crazy fiddle fiddle concert for us, um, which all, all, everyone that participated in Symmetry's Got Talent was like blown away at how many ultra talented people you got. One of them on the screen with us today are with our company. <laughs> that people are like that person could absolutely be a musician and make pretty good money just like that. But um, the person that won the Miata took it home. And then like two weeks later, I got a ticket right. now that Miata blowing through a red light. <laughs> because it was still registered to my name. And Sarah was like, what, what is this? Was, oh, she thought you just had another, another ticket. Uh-huh. Yep. You've had your fair share of tickets. I mean, I let's be fair. Not anymore though. Not anymore. That's the old me. Yep. Um, Scott, you're killing it, man. What you got in store for us today? Man, we are going to bring it. And uh, we're excited about the call. We, um, you know, we're wrapping up our last couple of weeks of what could be our run um, uh, with, you know, we, we're very modest with our hashtag. It's the greatest team ever assembled. I'm really fired up for them. And uh, we've got a few of the members uh, hopping on with us today. So uh, just a little heads up. If you have any of you team builders out there, if you have some folks that are battling with their belief, maybe kind of like struggling a little bit, uh, half one foot on the dock, one foot on the boat, send them a text, man. You never know what type of voice they need to hear. 
Mm -hmm. Throw them a little text, it might be worth it, but we, we'd love to talk to them. Good, that's what we were just talking about on the last call with all the agency owners and leaders. Yep. That belief, you know, how important that is. So good topic. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I think we got a video to kick us off and then we'll get right into it. Mute and veil. So Thrive is our wellness and leadership platform that we developed uh, several years ago, really out of that core value of relentless pursuit of personal growth. The company uh, was really started in a lot of ways with Thrive as the, as the foundation. It is about growing yourself as leaders. How can you bring more influence? And then what is it about you that makes you passionate about what you're doing. You know, the philosophy, the, the spirit towards personal development was already here and, and Thrive was just a way to put some structure around it. We have to grow ourselves in order to help other people grow. And Thrive is the set of tools that we use, our theories, our strategies, our language, our visual tools, that we use to help ourselves grow, to help other people grow. Our goal through personal development, through, through that growth of not just how to get better at business, but how to get better at life, how to have better relationships, how to be a better partner, how to be a better husband, a father, mother, daughter, like those are the kind of things that the Thrive Initiative allow our agents to do. You know, we live in an amazing house, we drive an amazing car, I know some people are really attracted to that, but what I'm the most proud of is, is my family, is the fact that I'm different. And, and becoming that person has been the, the best part of this journey. It's what we are, it's who we are, it's what we do. Great video. Love that one. Yeah. I'm going to share my screen now so we can start this party. Look at that. Beautiful people. Got them. Good timing too, man. It was a monster week. It was a monster week. Agency director. In We've addition had a lot of those. We're on a roll. <clears throat> we are on a roll, man. If you're not getting in on the action, I'd say, what you waiting on? Need to get in while the getting's good. So, Scott Summers, Esther Carlson, Ruth Slingo, Elliot Freer, and Kelly Summers. Can't wait to dig into that. Before we do, let's hit some numbers real quick. Top first-time rider of the week, Stephen Roof. 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 $5,702. Casey, something we have not done in a while. What did Stephen Roof do for a living before he found his true calling of becoming an insurance agent? I'm pretty sure he was, um, he had a, a roofing company. I think it was called Roof Roofing. I like that. Sure. I thought you were going with Roofs Roofs. <laughs> roofs Roofs. That's, too, <laughs> that's great too. I think that's a, that's probably a safe bet. We're going to go with Roofs Roofs. <laughs> roofs Roofs. Yep. But I'll tell you what you got here is no ceiling, Stephen. No roof for you. Is that a dad's pun? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Moving on. Top three in personal production for the week. Alyssa Gonzalez, John Joseph Griffin, and Latanya James. I mean, talk about no stranger to the leaderboards. Just always up around there. Love it. App count, Brian Howell, Paul Bean. Bain, Scott Forehand, 26. He was... He was, I wouldn't call it talking junk on the agency owner's call that we had earlier today, but I'll just say that he was pretty excited about a contest coming up in May that would be an app count contest. And now we see why. We see why he might've been so fired up. Yeah, I told him he was the early um, odds on favorite in the clubhouse. We'll see though. Medicare supplement writers, Myra Mares, number one for the week. Good job, Myra. Top disability writers for the week. Amanda Lucky, almost $3,000 in production just on DI. Nicely done. 
IUL production is going through the roof too, Casey. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, there's some good stuff. I keep kind of hinting around to it, but there's some build out coming. There's some cool stuff you guys will love about the IULs. John Griffin, well done. $13,200 in premium. Pretty awesome. Number one on the annuity board, Anna Burton. $453,935. Casey, have you ever seen such? Did you ever have a $500,000 or $450,000 annuity week as a producer? Nope. Not even close. Mm, Got to get that one pushed on through. Like what I'm seeing. i tell you what I really like what I'm seeing is what's going on with debt-free life. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. It's coming. Ron Williams, $8,400 in DFL premium. Um, man, I've gotten more feedback after a training from that, that DFL meeting last week, the DFL boot camp, than maybe any training that we've ever had as a, as yeah. a company. So second wave is coming of DFL. Yeah, it is. We had the pre COVID wave and now we're going to have the post COVID wave. I know we're going to have to come up with different terminology though, because they're both PC pre COVID post COVID. It's going to be really confusing. Total recruits. This is everybody. Not just licensed people, but all of them. Jacob Pogue with 17 in the base. Jacob Pogue with 35 in the direct. How many of those were licensed? Five in the base, 17 in the direct board. I see you, Easy Eddie Pritchett. That's a good number for you, too. Capistrano Cook, Jimenez Hunt, all tied at three. Kevin Purdy, I see you there as well. New writers for the week in the base shop. Chris Cook, man, good week. Pogue, Pendleton, Else, all with three. Purdy and Pogue tied at the top for new writers with 10 in the direct. Man, that's a big number. Excellent work, guys. Scott Mank, Mike Colburn. Look at all the SNAs, buddy. Might be a record. Oh. Record for seasoned new agents. Rudy, you think he goes by Rudy? We'll better say Rudolph Francis. Might go by Valentine. It'd be hard if your name was Rudolph Valentine Francis, if your name was anything Valentine, to not go by Valentine. Yeah. You think that's Val Zarn's real name, Valentine? Might be. Yeah, it could be. Misty Centron, Nathaniel Sprope, Alicia Hill, Camille Thomas, Christopher Rowland, Scott Long, Stacy Love, Gordon Slowinski, Jeffrey Scheme, Leslie Atkinson, Arlette Salazar, Cassandra Abbott. Avachuco, Avachuco, Cassandra Avachuco, nailed it. Charity Pruger, Lindsey Butler, Sean Murphy, Sharon Watson, and William Spriggs. I mean, nice. that's a that's a good looking group right there. It is a really good looking group, and a lot of them. Well done, all you SNAs. Key leaders for the week: number one, Mark Hamelman. Agency owners for the week, Lee Jed with 46,000. Good week from all of you. Agency directors, number one, Melissa Weagle. Did you, was there any doubt after that conference call? She killed it. Last so week? Much good feedback. Just killed it. So much feedback, Melissa. I was writing some things down in your, when, when I was listening to your story and I, I just threw it away, but it, I had a, a, a note with a smiley face, fell out of the car door four times, <laughs> which I just thought was hilarious. So good. Oh, man. Number one, Tony Capistrano on the Regional Agency Directors Board. George and Janet Matthews are killing it too, man. They're in a run of their own. Yep. MVPs, number one, Scott Summers, 97 large. Well done, Scotty. Good timing. Kyle and Lisa Kimbrell continuing to kill it. Number one on the senior vice president board. Big old week. Uh-oh. Ryan Miller, Michelle Miller, $375,000 in premium. Tight race still out there. Oh, did I tell you that I got a text from Miranda Martin last night? No. You know where she's going? Where? Today. She's not on the call. Where's you know she? why? Because she's going to LeBlanc. Oh man! Just yesterday, you and I were saying we're going to the block this year. Block, yeah, I was. I was so jealous. Dang it, Miranda! Ah, she deserves it though. She does. We need pictures. Somebody get in touch with Miranda to send us pictures. 
All right, who over here? Lynn Watkins, almost 700 large, man. Great week. Lenny, senior partners at the top of the heap, Mr. Pritchett with 857,000. And the number one managing partner and overall agency for the week, Marshall Whalen, 600 and, excuse me, $949,610. Great week, Team Whalen. Everybody that was a part of that. It's awesome. Kevin Purdy at the top for the directs board, 352,795. Kashan and Kevin are both about this, they're about to drop. Yep. You know that, about to drop. In a good way. In a great way. It's the only leaderboard that it's okay to go down in. Right. Maybe base shop if it's like temporary. Yep. Like that. Yep. Seesaw. He doesn't like it when I say that. He texted me angrily. <laughs> I could just see him. He had his phone like all the way out here and his one finger. Like, I'm not dropping. I ain't dropping. He's like, have you seen George and Janet? I ain't dropping. <laughs> oh, promotions, top producers. Way to go, Paige Jensen, Jesse Buckrock, Gina Storvza, excuse me, Sborza, and Shannon Turner. Well done. Look at these team leaders. Brandon Helmink, Dale Paff, David Hadley, Douglas Doerr, Jeffrey Miller, Jeffrey Maldener, Karen Earhart, Liliana Goble, uh, Nicholas Schlimper, and Otis Houston. Nice. Well done, everybody. Key leaders, Adam Ellison. Hmm. Long lost brother? Man, I've always wanted a brother. <laughs> I hope so. Adam Ellison, if you're on, light up the chat for me. Let me know where you're from, just in case we need to track back our lineage. I don't get to meet many Ellisons. Not like a Watkins where you guys are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Not as many Ellisons, okay? It's possible that we're related. Hadler, excuse me, Hader Istanbuli, Sarah Ranke, uh, Rank, Jason Pogue, nice. There you go, Jason. Jamie Sousey, Winifred Brown, and Lori Aspenson. Nice. Agency team. owners. Man, it's good to see Brad Sullivan, Joseph, yes. Ben. Malela Carson, Rachel Burton, and David Albero, who I'm, who's all of these folks are killing it. But Miranda was especially bragging on on David last night. What kind of impact he's having? It's really good to see. Welcome to agency ownership, guys and gals. A lot of hard work. Can't wait to meet him on the um. Uh, the, uh, the, uh hobnobbing. Uh, hobnobbing, yeah, yeah, we've been having a blast on our hobnobbing. Uh, yeah, we have, hobnobbing. it's been a lot of fun, man. The agency owners, really, really good to meet, meet the newest AOs in the team. Yes, it is. That means that James Robertson is an agency director. Well done, Mark Nadeau, Zach Little, both radical. And there we go, those are our promotions for the month. We also, I'm not sure if we really talked about how awesome it was for Eileen Balmer to, to not nearly enough. We haven't talked about it. I can tell you that very, very proud of Eileen Balmer for being yes. our newest direct, right? Yep. Pretty awesome. Eileen that direct boards about to blow up. We got, we got a bunch in the pipe. We got three or four. Uh, Eileen just hit it. And then you got three, at least three more, two more that could hit it this month. Maybe three more that could hit it this month. We were sharing on the last call, Brandon, and I think it's, it'd be fun to share with all of you guys too. Guess the number one industry out there that creates the most millionaires. And you already know, because we talked about it last night or this morning, but. I was going to guess incorrectly to see if I could throw them off. <laughs> yeah, what's your incorrect guess? Um, inventors. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope you missed it. Dang it. Financial services, insurance, number one. That's right, baby. Now, and when you see what our company is experiencing and going through right now with the amount of people that we have that are earning um, or have already been considered in our eyes, uh, you know, millionaires and a millionaire is just not somebody that grosses $83,000 a month or whatever the number is that you need to hit a million a year. That doesn't mean you're a millionaire because you may only net 500 or you may only net 100 or whatever. Millionaire is, uh, when you talk about that, it's usually around assets and what kind of assets you have. Income is a part of that. What about your agency? The asset that you actually have some ownership in? What is the, what is the value of that? Um, what is the equity in your home? All the assets that you have paid for, real estate, that kind of stuff. 
I don't know of a company anywhere near uh, us in our space that has as many millionaires as we've created in, in 11 going on 12 years and not just the top level guys. Now we're talking to, to second generation uh, people, you know, the Eileen Bombers who are going to be there in no time short if they keep on up the pace they're doing. Um, and I just think there's so much excitement to me over the next two to three years as our company continues to produce generations of people who are technically, you know, millionaires um, by, by the definition that you find on Wikipedia. And so uh, I just think that's really cool. And the byproduct of a company that produces as many millionaires as we do, uh, Brandon, is you also got a, a ton of people earning deep six figures, mid six figures and six figures uh, as, a, as a byproduct of it all. So it's <laughs> pretty awesome. Yep. I saw that it was a TikTok yeah. that you sent out. Yep. And but if you I, Google uh, it too, if you Google it, there's pl- plenty of uh, sites that you go on. Um, oh, yeah. Number one is financial services. Number two, Brandon, technology. Number two is inventors? Just so, kind of, it just so <laughs> happens that we're heavily, heavily investing. We already have heavily invested in technology and we're getting ready to invest um, uh, an unheard of amount, uh, millions and millions of dollars over the next 12 to 18 months. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to make some of those tech guys millionaires. I think is what you were saying. <laughs> so pretty, pretty good spot. It is a great spot to be in. Um, and just, you know, take a minute and almost, I, I do this almost every day, certainly during the pandemic and just out loud, sometimes even Meredith and I are like, how, how grateful are we that we answered a newspaper ad, you know, that we somehow landed in this industry by sheer luck. And I guarantee you, there's so many people out there. I think of Edward Pritchett and that wonderful speech he gave at the last virtual conference um, about becoming, and we're all still becoming, but, you know, none of us were becoming insurance agents until we just kind of fell into it. Yeah. And how many people fell into it? They thought it was, Edward's story was that he thought it was a, um, it was basically a placeholder until his engineering firm could overcome the, the, uh, the recession. But, but every day I'm like, man, I'm so grateful that I found this business. I'm so grateful that it is a business that is shown to be recession proof, most recently pandemic proof. Um, and when you have that much gratitude, you know, you can't help but share it. And I would say that, that if I'm listening in on this call and I'm brand new or I've been here for five years, if you want what these other folks are getting, Mark Nadeau and Zach Little, we've been on this page for a while, but really go up to anywhere in the leaderboards, you got to sell out to recruiting. You have to sell out to recruiting. You have to understand that while anybody can do this, most won't. And that's okay. So you got to work the numbers game. And you got to share what we have because there are so many people out there that want what we got and they deserve it. They deserve it. So what is your process and your system going to be like many of you, most of you have a system around production, unless you're brand new and you're working on that. Don't wait to recruit until you figure that piece out. Those of you that still haven't kind of figured the recruiting piece out, as we were saying to the agency owners on the last call, you're probably going to stink at it at first. Right. That's what kind of having a growth mindset is, is understanding that I'm not meant to be great at something doing it the first time. I just got to do it and get better and keep getting better. And then when you have your systems down to where you're recruiting five people a week, three to five people a week, I'm telling you, watch out. If you want to know what it feels like to make $10,000 in a month passively net to make 10,000 in a week passively, to make 40,000 in a week passively like some of these guys are doing, you got to get started. And the only way to do that is to go out and share this thing with as many stinking people as you can. So I would encourage everybody to talk to your upline because there is no better time to be recruiting than right now. I mean, we got, you know, with the virtual selling platform, with the final expense stuff that we're going to be talking more about next week, with the ability to increase digital leads by another 100%. Lead flow is up this week, a um, thousand leads out more than last week. And that was a thousand leads more than the average of the previous, the previous three weeks, right? So there's never been a better time to just 
Well, you got, you, know, you, you have more demand for the products that we sell than I've seen, I've, I've ever seen in my career, Brandon, you know, however long we've been doing this. I got my insurance license in April of 2001, coming off of being a plumber's assistant, high school dropout. <laughs> so, I've, you know, how many years ago is that now? 20 years ago, man. 20 years ago. You're old. <laughs> you answered a newspaper ad too. You got your ad, you got yours pretty early too, buddy. I know. Um, <laughs> but you know, have you have you have you ever seen the demand for the products that we sell like we see today? No, no. I, it was funny. I was on the back porch of Native last night after you had left. I was with the guys, and somebody pulled out an old award of yours from the <laughs> company that you used to work with, and it was yeah. top producer in the company for that for that month. Uh huh. It was twenty two thousand dollars <laughs> in submit production. And so, if you go back and look at our top you know, 10 for the week, there are people that were, that were over that. And there were people that were pushing that for the week. So I think I agree with you. It's not only is demand higher, but I think the skill sets have grown. The type of people that, that are attracted to this business now have, have, have grown as well. And so you just have better, hungrier people calling clients that, that, that need you more than ever. Well, it just goes into this, you know, again, you have the most demand we've ever seen since we've, since we've been around, um, Brian would jump on that bandwagon and completely agree. He's probably listening in. Um, but we also have this very entrepreneurial culture developing in our country where more and more people are, you know, are wanting to do something for themselves. And, um, they're looking to align, align with companies that, have the values and the community and the connection and the culture that we have all while making a massive impact in people's life, both with the products, life insurance products, and with the opportunity to, to actually in, you know, duplicate yourself. Um, I'm with you, Brandon. It all starts with, with belief and it all starts with mm-hmm. gratitude towards what it is that we all have here. And if, if you're suffering on the personal production side or the recruiting side, it may be that you really need to take a minute, like Brandon was saying earlier, and just think about, man, what it is that we all have here. You know, it's really special. And on top of the impact that we get to make, on top of the flexibility that we get with time and money, on top of the commissions and the amount of money that's in this industry and, and in this company, then you get these insurance companies uh, funding it all and sending you on world-class trips. And so there's a lot of places, maybe other industries and stuff where you could find a, find a spot, make, make money, potentially these million dollar numbers we're talking about. It's out there, but you see them working 80 hours a week and you see them not happy because whatever they're doing maybe isn't making the kind of impact that we get to make here. And they sure as heck ain't traveling. They're not being forced to travel to, you know, Switzerland or wherever these insurance companies you know, kind of force, like they, they, because a lot of people, I know some people uh, in my network, Brandon, that make decent money, but that's one of the things they're always jealous about with, with what we have is the, uh, the forced travel where the carrier send you on trips and it's like, okay, I got to unplug. I'm going to go on this trip. And then also um, the, the, uh, the team connection community aspect of things, the built-in mentorship that we have naturally have here is just something that a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs miss out there, you know, the, the top um, kind of agency owners and directs, those that are building an organization, I guarantee you they have in a normal year, $50,000 of comped travel expense. Yeah. Think about that. I mean, you're probably getting 10 to $12,000 per trip paid for by these carriers. <clears throat> That's crazy. And to think that not only are they comping the trip, they're probably paying you another 10 or 12 grand while you're gone. <laughs> right. If you're doing that, if you're doing I mean, thing the right way, that's what you're getting. Yeah, we laugh about it, but I swear it's like so much gratitude um, <clears throat> because it's it's the time part, the money part, all of it is there. For those of you that thought, never thought, I should say, that you could become a multiple six figure in- income earner or a seven figure income earner, sell out to recruiting. Do what those above you do. Find a way to bring in fifteen to twenty people every month. And it will happen. That's it. Figure that piece out. Kevin Purdy's figured it out. Jacob Pugs figured it out. 
Edward Pritchett and Marshall Whalen, Ryan Miller, Brian Delaney, all of them have figured it out. Some people have kind of figured it out, but they haven't sold out enough to figuring it out. What are you going to sell out to, right? Like what result are you going for? And if it is to get time and money and a whole bunch of both, you got to figure out how to go out and bring 20 people a month into this thing. Yep. The quicker you figure that out, the quicker you will have more money than you know what to do with. You'll be stroking $100,000 checks to charity. Yep. That's what it's all about. And so. a simple answer to that, Brandon, is you can pay for it. You can actually set up systems and processes, but it takes an investment. And the way you create that investment is using the absolute best ATM in, in, the, in the world, which is selling insurance. You have an ATM in your backyard. In fact, you don't have to get out in the backyard. You can sit in your own home now and virtually do it. But you have an ATM at your disposal. You need to learn how to use it. And the way you use it is you get as many appointments a week as you can pack in. And then with the cash flow that comes from that, you set up the systems, the marketing budget, the process to actually get yourself in a position where you can interview enough people to attract the right ones to your system. And that, that will end up being 15, 20 a month. But um, it's, it really starts with high levels of personal production. You know, we, we don't, we don't, we're not managers, we're leaders. And so we show people the way and, and we do it ourselves. We go first. That's what a leader does. So you go first in the way of personal production, create enough cash flow, reinvest, hire. And the beautiful thing about doing enough personal production, not only do you now have the keys to building a, the system to recruit, you're also the most attractive when you go out and do 20, 30 apps a month. I'm a way better recruiter when I got the cash flow glow, you know, and I'm a way better salesperson when I got the cash flow glow. It's kind of the rich get richer. Like the more I do of it, the better I am at it. And the more yeah. I attract to me. Yeah. What recruits and what sells is stories, right? Yeah. In facts, like I, I can, I can say to you, what do you want? What are you looking for? And whatever it is that you tell me that it is that you're wanting or looking for, assuming that it's in alignment with what, who we are and our values if I'm a $10,000 a week producer, how easy of a recruiting message is that? Well, I just went out and this week helped 10 families, wrote 10,000 in premium. You would have made about six grand on that this week. How's that sound? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and yeah. People, people make it way too complicated recruiting. That's really, and I, if I don't have the story myself, I'll use somebody else's story. Yep. I'll do that. Brandon hey, Watkins, my buddy, man, he wrote 22 grand last month. <laughs> he's number one. That's, not, he, he's, that's a lot of money. Um, Brandon, do we want to hit on the exciting stuff we're talking about? We talked about the AO as far as the, the contest. Hints? Yeah. yeah. Hints on the contest, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we've got this week and next week for Double Ears production. Utilize the heck out of that. You won't regret it. Starting in May, we're going to be having a contest um, that is going to reward exactly what we're talking about. Applications uh, and one you know point a point system one for apps taken in one for recruits brought in and there's going to be some pretty awesome prizes given away so i'm not going to give it away we're going to we're going to roll this out next week no sandbagging it will not help you trust me it will only hurt you um, but we'll let you know all of the rules soon most of the directs i think are going to be kind of piggybacking onto this a lot of the agency owners will be piggybacking i wouldn't be surprised if we have an opportunity casey to put up 50 winners instead of five. Yep. And there's going to be some serious contests too. Yeah, the, so, top, the top, the top prizes are the kind of prizes you want. Yep. So I would say if there's homework to be done between now and then it would be get with your growing upline, your growing upline, get with the person above you that is growing, not the one that is shrinking unless they're about to start growing again, then you can get with them too, but get with the one that knows how to recruit and here's what I want you to say to them. I'm willing to go all in on building. What do I need to do? Help me. Can you help me build a game plan? Yep. That's the only question I want you to ask them. And they what will the help other? you build a game plan. If you're the type of person that asks the question and is willing to do what the answer is. There are a lot of people that like the thought of doing a lot more than the actual doing. Don't be that person. Because if your upline's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That means that you have probably been that person. So don't, don't be that person. Be willing to do the activities that are going to yield the result. And if you do this consistently, May can be very fun for you. May and June will be very awesome for you. That's right. 
I think that's, uh, that's a good enough hint, right? That's a great hint. And I would also say announcement we just made um, to the agency owners, which we're excited about. You know, before COVID, we were, our national calls were a little bit different. Um, we had a builder's call that led into our national calls. And we're bringing that back because um, it is, as Brandon has said uh, on the last call on this one, it's go time, guys. We have a lot riding on our company right now, a lot of eyes on us, and they're loving the growth, the, the growth in production, the recruiting. They're loving that. We just need to show everyone more. And so um, right now, uh, starting May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, which Great is to start too. That's two Wednesdays. Two Wednesdays from now at uh, 1230 Eastern, and we'll get some marketing out on this, 1230 Eastern, we're going to start our builders calls back. Every single Wednesday, I'll go for 30 minutes, and we're just going to teach you guys how to build a business. We're going to interview the top builders, recruiters in our company uh, mm -hmm. every single Wednesday and, uh, and show you how to do it. And then we'll roll right into our national call at one o'clock, and we're going to start making these calls um, an hour and a half max. And so combined between the builders and national call be about two hours or less, but we're going to um, try to trim down these national calls and try to get me and Brandon to shut up if we can. Um, and not take we will, we will say all of what we said on the previous call. So we won't be <laughs> yeah. so long. Exactly. All so right. That's starting Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. We're bringing builders back. I like it. We're bringing builders back. <laughs> uh, what we got here Thursday, tomorrow, my policy overview. Ha! You got a surprise on that one coming up too. That's going to be pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And of course, Monday, Mr. Ben Seifor on the Monday sales training. Stay tuned. Don't forget, Meredith Whitney, special guest Ashley Tarr, uh, April 22nd at 2. Who told you you weren't empowered? You ain't hear that from anybody around here. You can hear the opposite. We had our best training ever in terms of like, DFL and how much feedback we got outside of maybe a national conference, something like that. Um, the DFL boot camp was unbelievable. I, you know, you and I can hear Resmus um, fired up and yelling from offices down. Yep. It's not just the new software; it's the new training system. All of it is creating this this tidal wave of DFL, and there couldn't just like mortgage protection. There is no better time than right now. Yep. Next boot camp already filled up. First one filled up sold out real quick. Next one's already sold out. Um, you might want to go ahead and sign up for the 13th and 14th through the HQ events calendar, because if you haven't done that, you can't have access to the software until you go through the boot camp and understand how to use it effectively, that sort of thing. Also, starting next week on Tuesdays, a little bit of a different time for us, Tuesdays at 11 Eastern, there's going to be a weekly training webinar called Debt Free Living, L-I-V-I-N, baby. <laughs> Get on there with Resma. There's going to be leaderboards. There's going to be, you know, kind of a, we won't say siloed, but we'll say segmented approach. So if you're a DFL agent, you want to learn how to do more DFL from marketing to sales to all of it, you're going to want to get on that one every week. It's going to be a good one. And here we go. Protect the protector. Mr. Spivey, I know that you're in here for this. I am. And Mr. Something, you've, something you've been working on. For a while now. We We're also fired up to Kelly announce and, uh, this. We've yeah. uh, overwhelming feedback on, we know we all are very focused around here on protecting the protector that is taking care of our agents. And we have long been about actually owning and having policies to cover ourselves, especially on our agents who are going into homes to, to convey the importance to families of having that coverage. And Brandon and Casey, we couldn't be more proud to announce a very exciting new program with our good friend down there, Mr. Kelly Steinmetz. And Foresters is partnering with Quility for their own Protect the Protector offering. So Mr. Kelly, come on on buddy and let's talk a little bit about the process and vision for this program that we've got lined up. Yeah, thanks Todd. Uh, it is definitely very exciting, and I will have to thank everybody there in the home office at Symmetry that helped us put this together. It's been a long process. I think Brandon or Casey approached uh, me on this sometime mid last year, I think, 
And uh, it, it wasn't an easy process for us internally, uh, but because Symmetry is our number one IMO and a blue chip partner, you guys continue to break records every day. And a matter of fact, yesterday you broke a record for new submitted uh, applications with Foresters uh, for us. So uh, thank you guys for that. Uh, you're our number one IMO, three years running. And uh, you know we, we couldn't be happier to work with Symmetry and to be able to put something like this together for you. You are the only distributor that we have done this for or will do this for. So that just kind of gives you an idea how much or how highly we think of Symmetry and Quility. So we're, we're, we're super excited. All the folks in the home office uh, put their hearts and souls into developing this for us. It, we had to do a lot of workarounds to make this work on our end uh, for the systems. But again, our executive team looked at this and they said, this is a no brainer. We have one of our, or our best partner coming to us, wanting to be more engaged and you know, on top of that, if you look at uh, symmetry and everything that you guys stand for and talk about, and what Forrester stands for and talks about, you know, one of our part of our mission statement is uh, life insurance with a purpose. And you know, this I think kind of sums that up. So we're we're very happy to do this, and we're excited to announce that we are going to roll this out tomorrow. And I encourage everybody to get on uh, the training webinar, which is going to walk through the process of uh, the, uh, for the agent to get the symmetry, uh, my symmetry uh, policy. And, you know, I, I know you have this existing with another carrier. I, I think our program, uh, our options are gonna be a little bit more wider um, for the agents that are interested in doing this. And of course, you'll get the uh, benefit of being a, a benefit of being a member with Forrester, so you'll get the member benefits. And that really aligns very nicely with uh, the Symmetry mission and, and what Symmetry stands for. So we're, we're, we couldn't be more excited, Todd uh, and Casey and Brandon, and we're really looking forward to, you know, launching this with you guys. And this is exciting stuff. And we've got a, probably a lot of new agents on the phone that don't know too much yet about the Protect the Protector program. And what, what the mission is, is to make sure that we're taking care of our own, taking care of our family first. And um, that's the best way that we know how to ensure that we can fully protect the families out there that we serve. And what the My Policy program does is you're allowed to come to Quility, become an agent with us. And for the first year, you can take out an insurance policy on yourself with Foresters and we will actually cover the first year premiums. Absolutely 100% free to you as long as you are qualified and approved for that policy. And Kelly's gonna walk you through what products are available, any limitations to that tomorrow. So make sure that you are on that national training call tomorrow. But this is an incredible benefit. There is nobody else in the industry that actually Puts their, puts their money where their mouth is. And what we're out there selling to our individual families that we serve, we're gonna give to you for the first year when you join Symmetry. We appreciate you being a part of this, Kelly, for sure. And Brandon and Casey, I know y'all seen a lot, of, uh, a lot of success in the past with this My Policy program. And I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to say thank you to a lot of people behind the scenes, Kelly and the entire Foresters team. This is no small undertaking. Um, and especially over here on the agent success team and Miss Kayla Rosser, it's a huge passion of hers to continue to develop, um, whether it's the health benefits side that we offer with Apex, whether it's with the My Policy program with Americo and now Foresters. Um, it's just an incredible mission that our department takes on. So incredible uh, thanks to that team. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Um, yeah, what a great partnership. Uh, Brandon and Kelly. I started this, uh, this, this company um, with Foresters. You know, you, you guys were one of the only products that I carried around with me in my bag. And yep. I, I, the reason why Brandon and I really love you guys and loved, especially when we were out in the field too, is because, um, you know, you guys went over and above what normal life insurance companies do for the clients with the member benefits. And uh, 
there's a lot of alignment there. Like you said, like part of joining our company is we want there to be benefits along with that over and above what, what, what everyone else puts out there. And so this, my policy program is a perfect fit for you guys and us to, to, to kind of lock arms and, and make sure that everyone, regardless of, you know, sometimes people come to our company and they don't have 50 or hundred bucks a month or whatever the number is right off the bat to, uh, take care of what they should first before they go out and tell others to do it, you know, with their policy. And so, you know, sometimes you hire people and they just don't have the funds necessarily to take care of their family right off the bat. Maybe that needs to go towards leads first. So they can start generating some income. Well, you got the, my policy program right there with you guys to, to kind of make sure that they're, you know, it's like going to the car lot and you got a guy trying to sell a, a, a car and, you know, or Ford or whatever. And he, he drives a Chevy. Like I, I want to have the product that I'm selling, you know, it's important. It, yep. It's certainly a great opportunity too, as we all know, for, for those that are recruiting and building a team to come in, get licensed with one of our core partners at Forrester's, write a policy on yourself. No better way to learn than to go through this, pro this program, this process yourself so that when you do go into the home, you're familiar with the app. You're familiar with the process. You're familiar with the questions that are going to be asked. Best this is a way to help you jumpstart your agents to get comfortable writing an app. And who better to do it than on yourself yep. when you actually uh, can answer all the questions with uh, off the back of your hand. That's right. It's one of the best training tools we have because you're going to be your, your worst client, right? I want to know how critical illness works. I want to know how the death benefit works. I want to know all those questions that your clients might also have. So you end up answering those because you're purchasing it for yourself. So it'll be fun. Thank you, Kelly. Yep. Oh, th thank you guys. Again, we, we couldn't be happier to engage uh, on this initiative with you. Our, when, when Symmetry uh, speaks, Foresters listens. So again, uh, we're happy to be a part of this and look for more information tomorrow in the training webinar. And next week, we're going to be sending out some email uh, as well to uh, uh, spread some more information on it. So again, thank you guys. Thank you, Forrester. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly. Yep. Appreciate Forrester's. Casey, not only did we build the company with Forrester's, we, uh, before we started the company, we were producers with Forrester's. Loving Forrester's. Big time. I remember one time, I, uh, the first trip that I ever went on with them was a trip where you and I were floating around a lazy river in the Bahamas somewhere. Where were we? Atlantis. Uh -huh. And uh, that was really the first time that we got to know yep. Marshall Whalen and, and meet him and... Yep. Um, so there's a lot of great memories they there. Awesome trips, man. They, sure. they, uh, early on, uh, Sarah and I went to Fiji with Foresters. Yeah, uh, when Symmetry qualified for that trip. Um, man, they they put on a fantastic company trip. So you yeah, gotta, they know how to do it. Get in line for that too. Yeah. Um, well, we got a lot a lot of meat to to get into for the rest of the call too. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything, Mr. Spivey. I don't think there were any announcements that I missed out on. Um, no, all right. No, I think just, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, I think you guys hit it all. Biggest thing today is, is national administrative assistant day. Right. Yes, it is. Something nice and I can tell you that we have a ton of agency owners out there thriving because they realize they needed help running the day-to-day -day of their business. Yep. So we would be remiss here at Symmetry on behalf of our own staff and Miss Katie Cools over there, who has been a tremendous asset to the team. Yep. But to all of those administrative assistants and, and the assistance that those AOs get out there in the field to keep their business moving forward and serve their agents. Yep. Yeah. Couldn't Thank do it you without you. That is an understatement for sure. So other than that, Maggie. Brandon, I think we need to get you moving, buddy. I, last I heard, yes, you have an up and coming baseball superstar. <laughs> <laughs> well, my up and coming baseball superstar forgot his um, jersey and his pants for the game today. So we're, we're having a <laughs> he needs quick, an administrative assistant. He needs an administrative assistant. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not I'm not good at that for sure. But uh, yeah, I got to drive two hours. Um, to go watch Levi's first ever um, starting pitching opportunity. So awesome. it's not very often that I leave on a, on a Wednesday at uh, two o'clock, but today I, I kind of have to, because I got to get there before the game starts, but I will definitely be listening back in. Um, and I'm not going to leave before I get to introduce our good buddy, Mr. Scott Summers. Got a great 
Um, great group of folks on with you, Scott, you can unveil Kelly, you as well need to unveil because you guys are a dynamic duo for right. sure. And, um, Casey, I don't think it's any question, not only amazing leaders, but probably some of the most fun people oh, yeah. to be around also conferences, <laughs> conventions, trips. Absolutely. We absolutely love hanging around with you guys and, um, you're exactly what, symmetry and, and quality is is all about scott what did you do before this how, how did we find you <laughs> funny you should ask brandon because i was actually doing some reflecting before the call so uh i'm gonna actually give you the whole gamut so we're gonna get into that but most most recently before this i was doing home improvement sales with uh kevin, right legend kevin purdy yeah, yeah. so you know, we're working together how about you kelly i was a um gosh I have a long resume like Scott, but I worked in the corporate world in a cute little cubicle for about 18 years, sales, claims, customer service, you name it. So. Okay. Um, how, I love asking people this question because first off, Scott, Kelly, how long have you guys been with us? How many years is it now? We, we started in May of 2015-ish. I would just got my license 2015 and then just kind of burn the ships in January 16. Getting ready to celebrate, uh, getting ready to celebrate six years. That's, that's awesome. Um, how are things different for you now? That's my favorite question to ask people that are kind of been here for a while. They figured it out. Like we're all always still figuring it out, but you figured it out enough to, to have a tremendous amount of success. I mean, you're, you're getting ready to hit the top contract. You probably got some leaders that are under you that you're going to be pulling right up with you. How are things different for you and your family? Well, uh, yeah. For, and first of all, I want to answer that question, but thank you guys for bringing it every week. You know, thanks for putting this together and just bringing it every week. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, uh, Scott Summers, Director Kevin Purdy and Lynn Watkins Hierarchy. Um, I think that, you know, the, it, it really has changed. Be, uh, re, a lot of things have changed. One is you're starting to see the vision, the picture come into focus, right? I mean, you start talking about it early on. You're, you're talking about you know, whatever your ideal is, time, life balance, being able to, you know, hey, money's great. Uh, that might not be the, uh, your main focus, but it's nice not to have to worry about it. So things are changing as a result of those relationships that we invested in a long time ago. Um, so, uh, so many different things, family wise, being able to spend time, like you're talking about uh, driving two hours to go, you know, to, to drop off uh you know, Levi's, you know, stuff, you know, I mean, so we're, feel, we're feeling that too. And it's just kind of like, you know, we're starting to get to that point where we're like, man, a Saturday, I should be, I feel like something's missing here. I should be dialing, right? You know, so just, we're starting to, it's starting to come into fruition. It's starting to, the vision starting to, to really uh, paint a picture. Yeah. So the time, the time aspect, you know, the freedom of, of kind of what you're feeling. Um, talk to me about that, Kelly. What does that, what does that mean for you and your family? Yeah, so I felt like a single mom for a very long time. <laughs> um, you know, it was always me going with the kids places and Scott would hopefully show up, you know, at a game or practice uh, school conferences. I would just book him and not even include him because I knew he was out in the field. Um, so yeah, things have strangely um, been um, a little different uh, in a great way. Um, you know, I, I remember... Uh, just a few weeks ago, we were out Friday night, um, dial time, and uh, Esther was calling, and I said, hey, um, what you doing? She's like, oh, dial in. I just, you know, I don't know. I just thought about you guys. I said, oh, okay, well, we're out to dinner having some wine, and she's like dropping the F-bomb, and <laughs> I'm like, look, what do you want your up-and-coming 120s to be doing right now? Like, this is the vision. I'm, you know, right. I'm doing as if, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing you could have told us right there. It's the best thing it's you could have told us. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what you got in, uh, in store for us today, Scott? Some huge <laughs> numbers, by the way, just so everybody kind of knows what we're talking about. You've peaked at around $415,000 in a month in production, which is up from just in January, 267000 So entering your last month, um, where it sounds like you're, you're, you're well ahead of it, um, shouldn't be a problem. And then you know, you've got Esther Carlson, January we did 68,000, then peaked at 165,000. I mean, how do you get $100,000 above January in one month? You know, um, it's like your whole crew did this. Let's know what Ruth Slingo did. 
January 40,000 to 110,000. I mean, really unbelievable stuff. And Elliot Freer popping 100 grand also. Um, you know, you got a lot of great leaders, Scott. I think it says a lot about uh, about your leadership, obviously, and, and uh, Kelly's as well. And it sounds like you've got a really close-knit team. So I'm just really excited for everybody to be able to hear from you. Um, I think our title today, Learning to Follow Before You Lead with Perseverance, Vision, and Passion. Um, Good one. I'll turn it over to you, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Sure. Yeah. Take it away. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Once again, Scott Summers, Director of Kevin Perry, Lynn Watkins Organization, um, on with my uh, beautiful wife, Kelly. And uh, we're excited to be here. And, you know, I just kind of reflecting on what Brandon was talking about earlier. And, and also, you know, in addition to that, the managers, we had a, a direct, you know, managers call uh, a little while ago. And just some of the things we talked about, getting out of your comfort zone, timing, um, you know, just uh, investing in your business. So, um, Kelly, you know, let's just kind of talk about, you know, the title today a little bit and segue into this. And then, um, you know, I, Brandon just mentioned the team that we have, you know, and th there was a lot of investing and there was a subculture, you know, within Symmetry's culture that we really wanted. And, um, you know, a lot of that's been evolving over time, but we really needed to, the, the right people and things are falling into place. Um, yeah. So let's let's kind of talk about what kind of what we wanted as a, as a vision. You there, Kel? Oh, she's there. She is. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> I didn't plan on talking. No, <laughs> you're you're good at this. You're better at this than than I am. <laughs> well, you know, talk about. Let's talk about uh, what we wanted as a team. You know, I think we talked about the family life, the time life balance, but really, what what the culture? I think that really kind of you know, I think the core values is something that you really uh, locked arms with, and then you know the what we wanted as a culture. Yes, definitely. Um, where we came from, um, toxic environment for sure. Um, you know, it was cutthroat sales, you know, uh, the no support. And um, they didn't talk about culture. They didn't talk about personal growth um, and uh, definitely didn't have any time. Uh, just, you know, clocking in, clocking out, that W-2 lifestyle, um, you know, and you were used to commission. Um, but I think when you first, um, came to cemetery, that was your focus, you know, can I make six figures? Can I take care of the family? Can I go kill and hunt and gather and everybody's good. And I'm like, well, what about the people? What about, you know, that, um, so yeah, went to conference with you. Not the first one regretted that. Um, but definitely the next one, uh, after hearing all the good stuff and, um, yeah, I fell in love with the people and just looking around. Um, it just felt genuine and then the owners, um, you know, just down to earth and knowing that they were in the trenches at one point doing this, you know, means a lot, um, you know, just to, to be able to relate to the new agents coming in, um, and just, uh, how everyone wanted success for one another. I think that's a big deal. It's, you know, uh, nourishing and, you know, encouraging all those words. It's stuff, yeah. Lots of lots of uh, love for our folks. We really do appreciate them. We'll, we're going to come back on and talk to them about uh, talk to you in a minute about them. But uh, it was funny that Brandon asked this question. You know, what did you do before symmetry? So it's funny because I was doing some preparing, did some reflecting. So I'm going to tell you guys what I did. So unless you think I said text text some folks that you that might be struggling with belief, maybe they're not in the right place. But here's the thing. Here's my resume. And this is what Kevin had to look at six years ago. This is, this is my, this is my background. Okay. And I can tell you, I promise you, this will not sound eerily similar to Edward Pritchett's background. <laughs> not that I'm trying to, get. but uh, newspaper subscription sales, amusement park attendant, erosion control specialists, and there's nothing special about erosion control. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Uh, hamburger technician. And that's what we called it when we worked in fast food back then to make it sound a little bit better. Uh, two, a couple of times, I liked it so much. Roofer's assistant, master of the janitorial arts. Sometimes people call that janitor. It's good at pushing a broom. J uh, construction laborer, assembly line worker, forklift operator, uh, roofer's assistant, <clears throat> lawn fertilizer technician, bricklayer's helper, furniture mover, 
rock band frontman, had to put that in there for the guys, uh, relocation coordinator, auditor, commission clerk, uh, assistant store manager, sprinkler sales, timeshare sales, real estate agent, waterproofing sales. So I probably would have been better off making a list of what I didn't do uh, before symmetry. But uh, there you go. Uh, you know, so I, you know, and the thing is, is I'm, I've never known Kevin to do, do drugs. <laughs> he, his decision-making ability was not looking great when he, when he looked at that and said, hey, man, you need to come work with me. And the thing was, is we worked uh, together back in the previous company uh, where we were before. Um, the, uh, in the company that he, we worked for didn't have the right culture, didn't have the right mentorship, didn't have what he wanted, and he left. And, you know, the thing is, is I knew that I, there was something wrong, right? Um, but I want to tell you a story, and this is a, um, a story about, uh, the story I heard about this particular tree, and I think this is relative to my story here with symmetry. Um, and uh, I'll bring a picture up here, and this is uh, the this is a particular type of palm tree, okay? So this particular type of palm tree is called a talipot palm tree. I'll bring a picture of that up here in a second. But in the United States, this tree will grow somewhere between 30 to 50 feet, right? And it's not from here, but it will grow to about 34, 30 to 50 feet, okay? Um, where, where it's originally from in Southern India, Sri Lanka area, this tree will grow 80 to uh, 70 to 100 feet in height. You know, and the thing is, like the tree, um, it needs the right climate, the right soil, sunlight, it needs all of those things. Um, so Kevin came back to me in 2012, says, hey, you know, I, I, I left the company that we're working for. I found this company, told me about symmetry, told me about the culture, told me all those things. I, I, I really, you know, my ego got in the way, but I was really kind of stuck in my comfort zone. I was, I was, you know, happy where I was because I was comfortable. So I uh, listened to what he had to say. And I just said, hey, man, look, I appreciate your confidence in me. Um, you know, thank, thank you for thinking about me. But the answer was no. Um, you know, once again, I was stuck in a culture, lack of mentorship and all that, but I was really kind of happy I was, I was with my comfort zone. So I hung up the, uh, hung up the phone. Um, you know, I was settled there in that home improvement job for 10 years. I was in the wrong environment. And I remember kind of having conversations with Kevin over the years. And I'll be honest, I, you know, I was like, hey, I, I, want to, I want to hear the report back about how I was right and how you were wrong. And, and symmetry just wasn't for me, you know, and I moved on. Um, you know, please don't tell me about the, the time life balance or the more money or being able to travel and the lifestyle and all those things. Um, you know, that's what I wanted. I wanted to, I, instead of, I wanted so much more to be right. Uh, and I'd rather have, you know, Kevin fail and, and, and be wrong, right? So we had a lot of different conversations uh, over the years. And I finally took the, uh, you know, I, I stepped off of the, the dock there, you know, put a, put a foot in. And um, I, I went and got my insurance license 2015, passed my exam. You know, but even after that, it's that, can I do this? And that's why I want to talk to you guys about because you know the, the Kevin didn't hire. You look at my resume, and I didn't respond to Kevin his his request to come work for Symmetry to be uh, managing vice president with fifty producers on the team. I wasn't coming into that right. I I I, I required different versions of myself. We requ required different versions of ourselves to to get there. The thing was is I had quit growing. I was in a, a bad environment. But, you know, fast forward, um, you know, I, I said, you know, and this is the thing I want you to, you know, pick up on is I said, I'm going to give insurance a try. I'm going to give symmetry a try. Right. And, you know, with that mindset, I got exactly what I put into it. Right. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. Uh, and I tell you, everyone's got their first dial story. Here's mine. OK, so. Um, you know, we're all doing something new. So I, everyone can probably remember where they were when they started making dials for the first time. So, but uh, I'm sitting next to my mentor. I got a stack of leads. He's got a stack of leads, right? He's sitting there just clocking. I'm just setting up appointments. Um, and I had the phone script in front of me. I was rehearsed. I was sweaty and nervous. Well, anyway, so what you're supposed to do is read to the phone script and set the appointment. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, I started reading, the person answered the phone, 
And I just figured, I guess somewhere in my lizard brain said, you know what you need to do is jump up out of your chair. So I jumped up out of my chair, hit my head on a light. I was walking around the room dizzy. Like I, I was probably concussed. I just don't. And then I just said, I'm going to start spitting sentence fragments at this person. You know, maybe they'll hang up. Right. And it didn't work right away. They stayed on the phone with me for a little bit. So finally, I paused long enough and they finally just gave up and they hung up. And I was like, man, done. Good. All right. So anyway, it, it got modestly better than that over the dial session, but I didn't book any appointments. So my first dial session on my own by myself now, um, I get a, I, I buy 90 leads, get 90 leads. And um, I had a really good dial session. Well, the first really started with a, you know, I had to get prepared. So I counted all my leads. I was kind of frustrated because I had 104 leads and I only bought 90. So I, that was frustrating in itself. Like, I, you know, I got to figure out what's going on. I had to audit those. Then I had to highlight, turn paper sideways. I had to, I had to you know, sort them. I was a professional sorter. Should have put that on my resume. So anyway, so I, after, after all that, Kevin texted me said, hey man, how's, uh, how's things going with the dials? <laughs> it pops in about 6.45. I'm supposed to be done by 7, 7.30. So I looked at the text for a while. I'm like, I'm not even gonna respond to that. You know, I'm not gonna respond to that text tonight. So I didn't respond to it. So I went to bed that night after my sorting session, woke up, I just felt dejected, rejected. Um, and I had to redeem myself. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make, I said, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try it. So I get on the phone that day stuck it out, made 132 dials, talked to 16 people, and I booked six appointments. Three of them had no idea they had an appointment with me, but I booked them. They're on the books. That was back in the dark ages, back when we went to go see people in the homes, right? So um, I went out. I was excited, nerve-sided, whatever. I get in my car, go out to my first one, sit with my first family, and went through everything, sweated, you know, the whole profusely the whole thing nothing no you know didn't make any sale no family helped okay all right but you know I, and there goes that question again there's that little bubble there can I do this can I do this right and I go to my second one I, I'm doing everything that they said to do uh, the system says to do no 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 family help no right third one same thing no family help no and then I started listening to myself. Here's the problem. Can I do this turned into, I can't do this. Third time, fourth time, fifth time. I finally called Kevin after the last, uh, on the fifth appointment. I had one more for the week, This uh, two more for the week. Fifth appointment, I called Kevin. I just remember saying, driving down the road, I said, man, I, you know, telling myself, I know I'm right here, right? Kevin, man, I, I can't do this. I, you know, I just can't do this. And, uh, you know, I remember Kevin with, um, it's a good thing that Kevin really kind of came back with this message. Might even want to write this down. This is Kevin point full, intense coaching said something like, Hey, now you got this. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Did you hear me? I can't do this. Right. So, but anyway, um, it was, and then he was like, Hey, by the way, don't ever call me during a conference call again. You know, something, something about that. But anyway, doubt was setting in, uh, went and sat with my sixth one, my sixth appointment of the week, my very last one. And, um, I showed them the offers just like I did in the first five. And they said, yes. And I said, huh? Really? Okay. All right. So I wrote the applications. So anyway, uh, still, you know, some doubt, some doubt was setting in there, but um, it was some encouragement, but, you know, just like, you know, and I think just like the extreme drought that the Talapot deals with, the, the, the palm tree, um, the hurricane winds, you know, this, this guy, this, this tree continues to grow, right? And, you know, my first six weeks, five, six weeks went like this. Well, first week, no, 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 yes. No, yes, yes, no, no, yes. Week three, no, yes, 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 no, yes, yes. Week four, no, yes, 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 yes. No, yes, 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 yes. And you know, through all that, I'm just like, yes. In, tw in November of 2015, I was still part-time. I had one foot on the dock, firmly planted there, one foot on the boat, 
trying to figure out what I wanted. I was still trying it, but I now the commitment started to grow. The belief started to grow. And in one week in November, I went out and I, I sold 21 applications, still kind of on a part-time basis. I remember calling Kevin and the conversation sounded way different. I said, Kevin, I said, I can't get anybody to say no, you know, and it was an amazing feeling. But, um, you know, in the, the following year, 2016, went on to uh, write 500 plus applications. I was a, uh, the company's top application writer, November to remember champion. Um, you know, but here's, here's the other thing too. And this is what I had already kind of told myself, like I can be a good producer, right? I can be a good producer. Um, and Kevin called me at the end of that year said, Hey man, you know, I know you've dabbled in this, but I, you, you really have to start sharing the wealth. You need to start building. Now I had, I, we had tinkered with it a little bit. We tried it. Right. Um, but we didn't really sell out. We didn't really invest. And, and, you know, in addition to Ke me investing more, Kelly coming into the business, really getting focused on this thing. Um, we said, you know what, let's do this. And, and we, we put our heads down. But I, I think once again, going back to this um, particular tree, right? The you know, if you walk through any, er any area, Southern part of the, of the country, this particular tree is different, it's unique, all right? It grows to be one of the tallest trees, but it doesn't share its seeds of growth, all right? So if you walk uh, underneath a, po a palm tree, typically what you're gonna see is seeds of growth, it's, you, and, it's, and it'll do that at least one time a year, or maybe all year, multiple times a year. So I, I was growing from a production side, but I really wasn't investing in other people, right? Um, I remember initially Kevin came to me and said, hey man, you need to start building more. I just said, hey man, thanks for the confidence in me. I can't be a leader. I, I can't lead like you're leading. I can't be um, uh, manage people like you're, like you're doing. I said, I appreciate that, man. Thanks for the confidence. I just want, you know, hey, the small team that I have, uh, just not thinking outside of the box. So, but this tree, Years one, two, five, 10, 15, 20, no seeds, no seeds of growth, nothing to share, right? 20, 30, 40, 50 years, nothing, nothing comes from this tree. So reluctantly, I did start investing. Kelly came into the business and, you know, I just started getting these messages zone again. And I started getting these messages like, hey, I want you to read this book, Developing the Leader in You by John Maxwell. I want you to read how read how I raised myself from failure to success. I want you to read the miracle morning. I want you to read go I want you to read the slight edge. Growth, 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 growth. All that's happening, right? And you know, so did I. I was growing. I was growing. I was outside of my comfort zone. So, you know, sometime somewhere, you know, between the years 50 and 80, something occurs in nature with this particular tree, that's very, very rare. So one of the things that we experience is massive growth, but this tree, somewhere between the years 50 and 80, it takes several weeks, but this tree standing nearly a hundred feet starts to bloom and it starts to blossom. And it has this amazing, growth. It takes several weeks and it towers into the air, straight into the air. 30 feet into the air, this amazing bloom happens with vibrant bouquets, vibrant blossoms, and it just says, look at me. In the years 2017 to 2020, we broke out six agency owners on our team. The world's, this tree has one of the world's, the, the world's largest bloom of any tree on the planet, any plant in the plant in the, in the world. So I was the same guy that was digging ditches 15 years before that. I really needed the right climate and found the right culture. I needed the right soil and found the right system. I needed the right sunlight and found mentorship. So what do you need?
You know, what are you looking for? What's your why? What motivates you? Uh, because I can tell you, I was in the right place. I wanted to deny it, you know, for a long time. I fought it. But, you know, with the right belief, the right system around you, um, you can grow. So, Kelly, uh, it's a, been an amazing ride here. Um, I'm super stoked to talk to some of our some of our um, awesome leaders on our team. Our blooms. There are blooms. <laughs> they, they are. You know, so the funny thing was, you know, when Kevin, when we, we had that conversation back in 2016, you know, we, we looked at, you know, what was, you know, coming up with that plan, you know, like Brandon talked about, come up with that plan and talk to your growing upline. I talked to Kevin. I said, what do I need to do? He says, you need to invest more than you're investing now. You need to put more time in recruiting. You need to come up with a structured schedule. And it's funny because the first, the first batch of ads that I did on Craigslist, um, I ended up doing a um, interview with this next gentleman, agency owner, Elliot Freer. So uh, he's, he has a, a nickname dubbed on our team um, and uh, he's, he's, he's an amazing guy. So Kelly, um, you know, you're, you're uh, hands-on with working with agents and uh, his, his story has been great. Yeah, invest is our word of the year, and I love it because it it's doesn't only mean financially. It's investing in people and one-on-one -on -one and spending time and building those relationships. Um, I know they talked about it on the call. Um, recruiting mm -hmm. is really, you know, just the start of a relationship. You know, mm -hmm. you're finding out what they need, and you are, you know, you know seeing if symmetry is going to be a good fit. So, and it, it's not a good fit for everyone and that's okay. Um, you know, so Elliot Freer, he is definitely a good fit. He has been a good fit from day one. Um, and you guys yeah. I guess, met in a coffee shop, right? Absolutely. Elliot, you on buddy? I'm on mute. I'm on mute, but I'm on. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's a perfect segue because we call you the silent assassin on our team. Um, and, uh, so, you know, let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit. Let's kind of reflect, um, that coffee shop. I remember Kevin was getting on a plane that day and we talked about you after afterwards, but you were in that first batch of Craigslist ads. You were kind of suffering and, you know, just got your insurance license. I'll let you tell your story, but, um, but anyway, we call you the silent assassin because you like to post your sales, uh, you know, at the end of the week, you know, so we never know what you're doing at the end of the week, but, you know, elite producer. Um, if we if we gave it multiple times over, you'd be a multiple multiple times over um, agency owner. Um, you've been a tremendous um, a, a tremendous uh, person to be on our team to really kind of show that duplication. But here's a, here's a cool fact, buddy. One point four million dollars on your own pen since you started with the company. Pretty truly amazing. So go back to you know what you were looking for when you found Symmetry and kind of what made you what made you uh, take that step. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate that. Um, I'm Elliot. I'm direct to Scott and Kelly, part of the Kevin Purdy, Lynn Watkins hierarchy. Um, yeah, I was I was looking for, um, you know, a lot of things. I mean, the, the main one was the time life balance. I wanted to be in a job where I didn't have to work 80 hours a week, um, you know, never get any time to actually enjoy myself. Um, and, um, you know, obviously, you know, we're all looking for income, you know, that's, that's part of what we do, which is why we have jobs. Um, so, you know, to find a place where I could have um, a great income um, and also have time life balance, it, it made it sound too good to be true. Um, but when we when we met in that coffee shop and you uh, you explained to me, you know, kind of what you had gone through, um, you know, November to remember winner, um, you know, top app writer in uh, the company with 504 applications in 2016. Um, and uh, winning, you know, carrier trips. Um, and you basically said to me in that coffee shop, you said, how does that all sound to you? Do you want that? And, um, you know, I said, yeah, absolutely. I do want that. Um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That sounds amazing to me. Um, and that's, that's what really got me excited about jumping into this opportunity and, you know, burning my ships and giving it my all. And you've really been, you know, a good student of the system. I mean, building and, you know, sometimes some, we reflected on some of those numbers, like the best year you've ever had is over 400,000, which is awesome. You know, top 10, two years in a row there uh, when you first came into Symmetry. 
um, on your own pen. And then your team going to what you're on a million dollar run rate right now as a team. So talk about that, you know, uh, follow before you leave mentality. You know, one of the words that we put together for you, Elliot, and Kelly and I were brainstorming, we're like, what's one word that we can kind of bring to the table that really describes Elliot? And the word was perseverance. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely a good word. I mean, it's, you know, it's 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 knowing that you've, you know, you, you've got to give this your all. You know, you're, you're not always going to win the first time you try something, but it's knowing that you're not going to give up. You know, if you have that perseverance to know that, you know, it might take you a while to learn something and to get good at it, like what Scott said, you know, where he had no, 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 and then a yes. It's, it's the same process for any of us. We're learning something new. Um, and it's just the, you know, the grit inside you to stick with that and make sure that, um, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to, you know, throw in the towel uh, on something that could really be amazing for yourself. And, and, you know, that's, that's what I've experienced here. I'm, I'm in my fifth year. I mean, I, you know, I'm like Scott mentioned, I'm one of the originals uh, from his team and uh, take a lot of pride in that. Um, and it's nice to have been here and to see what, what Scott's gone through from being an agency owner and just starting to build to, um, you know, where he is today, getting ready to hit his 120 at the end of the month. Um, but yeah, I mean, we all, we all go through ups and downs. I like to call it a roller coaster. Um, you're going to have those good weeks and those bad weeks. And there's going to be weeks where you feel like, you know, calling Kevin and saying, I can't do this like Scott did. Um, and then, you know, you stick with it. And next thing you know, you're, you're getting those results where you're saying, Hey, I can't get anybody to say no. Um, and, and that's something that I've just done a lot of in my time here is just never let it break me, you know, those bad days, just to have that perseverance and to stick with it. Um, you know, it wasn't until my third try that I got my agency owner. I, I, I got to the third month two times before and didn't get it. It was on that third try that I, I got my agency owner. Um, so it's just a matter of sticking with things and knowing that the big picture is that, you know, people before you have done it. And if you stick with it and follow the system, you're going to get to where they are eventually. Well said. Well, Kelly, you know, silent assassin sounds kind of you know, pretty, pretty harsh, but we need a woman's <laughs> We need, we need another side here to kind of show who Elliot really is. So we got some insight. Yeah, I would say um, he's also a professional baby cuddler. Um, <laughs> if there's a baby around, watch out mamas. Yeah, um, it's adorable. Yeah, we have a new agent, uh, Ksenia and Pablo, they had a newborn baby and we had an event. And every time I looked over the baby, baby alert, Elliot had the baby, so. And the baby was very quiet. So if you need a professional baby cuddler, yeah. Elliot, Elliot's your guy. Whatever side of the screen he's on. <laughs> you know, Elliot, did that did that come into uh, with Deb when you for first date? You know, I'm a professional cuddler. For that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <dot com>. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Well, thanks a lot, buddy. Keep bringing it. A uh, million dollar run rate, and um, you're rolling, buddy. Good job. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right, Kelly, take the microphone. You gotta, you gotta uh, bring um, Miss Miss Carlson in here. All right, you do have a microphone here, you know. Yeah. Miss Carlson, wow, just a pleasure to bring agency director. She is um, this Alaskan strong log home builder, um, raiser of four children. Um, she loves to eat pizza in the back seat before we get to the office. <laughs> She'll help you if you burn your leg on an oven with a frozen Bubba burger patty. Just go on and on. She's just a super person. <laughs> well, well, Esther, when I when we first met, you know, I, one of the things I want to talk to you about was, and I remember the interview. I remember the day. I, I it's like you listen to a song, right? And I'm I'm listening to a song, and it takes you back to like you remember when you're in high school driving your car, or, you know, the scenery around you. I remember having that phone call with you. And you had just, you know, um, interviewed with uh, Tricia on our team. And then I spoke to you. And I remember like exactly where I was. I was standing outside of Starbucks. I remember looking at the sidewalk. I remember that moment because I really had made a good connection with you. And I think that this is the one thing I took away from the phone call is, wow, first one, right? Wow, this is what potential we have here. And the other one was, 
you know, there is a lot of things going on and we experience this when we're working with new agents. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I'm going down that road already. I want to introduce yourself, you know, uh, please do, but I want to talk about that with you. Okay, great. Esther Carlson, direct to Trisha Fry and you, the summer is awesome, pretty organization and Lynn Watkins, who was a big impact in my, my first um, event I went to as well. So I'm really happy to be here. So, you know, I, I don't, you always make it look better than it actually was. I was dying when I met you guys. <laughs> I was dying inside and out. I felt like, you know, my life was just over 58 and I didn't know what I was doing. Lost my job, lost a lot of money and had a ton of money going out every month. And, um, you know, sometimes just stuff happens. And I felt like my life had pushed me around to the point where I had to really look at like, wait a minute, what is going on? And who am I? And what am I doing here? You know? So, um, you know, on ZipRecruiter, I applied to multiple ads. Um, first of all, I wasn't used to looking for a job. I'd been very gainfully employed for, I don't know how many years, like a hundred, like 30, 30, 40 years. Right. I never needed to look for a job, had my own business, did really well. And this was the first time in probably 25 years where I was looking for work and I was a whole new deal, you know, going on zip recruiter and stuff. And I remember I got this one sheet back from a guy asking me what my goals were. I thought Trisha had sent it to me and I thought, oh, cool. What a cool thing asking me my goals. So when I had talked to Trisha and she was saying, what do you want with your life and stuff like that? I just assumed that she had already read my goal sheet that went off to some other cemetery agent. And I said, well, I really think it's great that you guys are really, you know, care about like what I want in my life and where I'm going. And she didn't even get that that had happened. And I think I called them back. Anyways, I could have easily been on another team, but it was Trisha Fry really that, I don't know, maybe I just needed a good shoulder to cry on because I did. And she helped me a bunch. And after I cried to her a whole bunch, I think I was ready to talk to you, Scott. And uh, Kelly, of course, was there to nurture along. It, I think that when you when you really don't know what's how to handle what's going on in your life, but you do know you need a job, it's kind of a sensitive uh, moment of like, how do you decide what you, you need help? You know, you need a mentor. And my brother was helping me with painting jobs. And I almost got a job at a pharmaceutical company. Believe it or not, I could have easily been a VP and made a ton of money doing there. But I went into that building and I thought about going there from eight or nine to three or five every day. And I thought I was going to die. I went out to the car and said, no, don't do it, Esther. You can figure this out. And then I talked to you, Scott, the Starbucks moment for you anyway. It's not for me. Um, and yeah. I realized my problem isn't that I don't have skill. My problem is I don't have hope. I don't believe that I can change. And my image of myself was so low because the level of failures, I needed somebody to help me build my vision. And that's what you guys did. And I believe now in hindsight, you know, when I interview people, I take that with me every time I talk to people. And with the last two years, so many people have had so much tragedy and trauma in their lives. They really do need us, not just because of the income and the freedom and you know, uh, the autonomy of being able to have control and govern your own life, but the friendship, the community, the people that like care about you. And honestly, that's what you guys did for me. I was, of course, a little like broken down and more um, ready maybe to take the feedback. I think, you know, I, humiliated, that's the word, <laughs> humbled. I was humbled by the life failure and I was ready. And uh, when you asked me, you know, you saw me, I was ADD all over the place. And Scott said to me, Esther, wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, what, you know, cause I'm going to do real estate. I think and I'm like, I don't even know you. And I'm telling you all my goals in my life. <laughs> and you were just like listening. And that was the coolest part. You just listened. And you said, okay, Esther, and you got my attention. Like Jim does Esther, what do you want? And I, I remember thinking, I know what I want, but I don't know if I can have it. You know, I want to be around people that care about people. I want to have a job that I can take care of people and still make some damn money. You know, sorry, I'm not going to swear. 
and and really see that you can nurture and care for people and get paid for the skill set that you've earned in that. I've been in sales, taking care of people my whole life, either through health education or some sort of um, food supplements or something. And when you, you know, the insurance thing, I was not open to that. And you helped me besides sending the, that Ned clip. Remember you sent me the Ned clip, the Bill Murray. And I was like, how did you know I was thinking that, you know, anyways, I, I just felt like your ability to connect you and Kelly's ability to connect and Trisha's, um, how in my openness and willingness to take that membership, that mentorship, you know, it's like the, the uh, title of your thing is like, how can you really learn to be a good leader if you don't know how to follow? Mm, it's not going to happen. That. Yeah. You know, and I think that uh, you said a couple of things there. Um, you know, I just want, and I, I wish I would have started with this here too, because I think people need to know kind of something, you know, two years, you know, you, you've been here with Symmetry um, agency director, right? Your team did a million dollars last year and you kind of, yeah, I think your second incredible year. Team. Amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just, you're just coming off of just re- 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 receiving the award, uh, for impact player of the year. Uh, congratulations. Um, you. you know, but I love that mentality and the vision that you try to share It's that conversation. Right. And then that's what you, the conversation that you're trying to have and, you know, with, with everyone that comes in, but I love your mentality with earn what you're worth, right? You're, you're out there just earning what you, what you're worth. And um, um, so many people fail to see that. And gosh, and once again, I didn't respond to an ad from Kevin saying, Hey, um, we're hiring MVPs with 50 agents. So I need you to take this over. Right. I mean, just, but having that vision and, 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 you know, helping people understand that they're worth more while you, while you walked into that office and you walked back out, you said, no, no, not for me. Right. You know, and, but it was just that little, you know, grab from the lapel there that said, you know, that, that helps you kind of redirect yourself. But I love your, your mindset on earning what you're worth. Right. And when I came in, I, I, you know, on Zip Recruiter, you, you fill, fill out your profile, right? And I kept getting back insurance jobs and a lot of sales, but mostly insurance sales. And I realized, man, Esther, what is with you that you are so rigid that you won't even look at that when the, you know, profile keeps bringing that up? Time, life, freedom. Um, you know, I'm in charge of my own income. It's sales. It's warm market. You don't even have to door knock if you don't want, you know, you don't have to do cold calls, provided leads. I mean, it had everything and I was all hung up. And that's when I realized I need to change, right? If I want to succeed, I need to learn to follow. And I think it's, it's one thing to be willing to have that kind of like coming home to Jesus epiphany where you realize, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to trust somebody. I did that with you. It's a whole nother deal to get the skill set, the mindset, the expertise that you brought to the table for me. And I tell people all the time, I am not working any harder than I have ever worked anywhere. And I'm making 10 times the income and soon to be a hundred times probably. And I have more freedom. And I have the best belief and mindset ever of what I'm capable of doing. And, uh, you know, I listen to Danny Young. I listen to Casey and Brandon all the time. I listen to you. I listen to all these other people. I listen to Ruth and Trisha when I first came in and, and Kelly's words of wisdom too. And what I realized is part of why my belief is so good right now is because I risked believing in you guys. You know, I risked believing that, you know what, I can do this. So now when I talk to people, that's not something I have to try on. It's something my own. And my perspective of following, basically because I learned to follow and do whatever you said, Scott. And I said, Scott, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. And I remember calling Ruth because you and Tim and Trish would tell me what to do, but I couldn't remember it. I'd have to record it because there's just so much. And I'd call Ruth because Ruth was on the calls. And I said, Ruth, I can't get this. This is too much information. Tell me what Scott just said. (laughs) And she'd tell me what he said, right? And I was like, okay, I can do this, right? So I followed you. So now when I work with people, guess what? I believe 
they're going to listen. I believe they're going to follow. I believe that they're going to vision. I trust them. I'm, ex you know what I mean? What is that worth? You know, it's worth everything, you know? And even if you suck, you know, even if you think you can't do it, if you believe like you have a, a elite producer leading you or anybody, actually, you don't even have to be an elite producer, right? Scott, you can just be the person that's learning and that knows more than you. If you follow them, you'll figure it out. And that's what I did. I love it. I love your work ethic. You work so hard. You're such a tremendous leader, uh, getting ready to break out your second agency owner and work your way to a regional agency director. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, I, and just kind of when you were talking there, you know, when we interview people, a lot of times one of the things, you know, what are you looking for, right? When you ask that question initially, it's like, oh, hit the play button and they just respond with, I want unlimited growth, unlimited growth. Mm, well, that sounds good, right? But yeah. not being able to connect what, what that is, what that looks like and what you have to go through to get it, yeah. unfortunately. And that small 20 minute phone call, a lot of times we don't have enough time. Yeah. Yeah. But I know you care for everybody that you speak to and you're really a huge part of our team. Oh, thank you. Well, one of the things I look for is a little feistiness, I think. You know, I, I, I like it when people tell me what they want. I, I, I think if you don't know what you want, it's harder to figure out how to help somebody. And if somebody comes in, even if I don't agree with them, if they say, this is what I want, that to me is a driven person. And I, and I think there's a, a quality of grit and a successful person. And that can be from a lot of failure or it can just be from you know a, a strong will of a person. But if I was to look at like the top three things that I think really make this work is because you know Helen, my recruiter, she's amazing. And I've asked her, I said, what do you think is like the top three things she goes, they got to like to be coached. <laughs> That's number one. In other words, you have to be willing to want to grow. And I think somebody that doesn't want to grow or doesn't even want to think about that kind of stuff has a harder time here because you kind of can't figure out how to get really good at this. Even with a lot of activity, if you do the activity and think you already know what you're doing, it's just not going to happen. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But if you do that constant activity and um, or what do you call it? massive action, constant to correction. And I remember my first calls because I didn't have the belief, but I borrowed yours and me. And I would listen to the calls. They'd say, you know, it doesn't matter how bad you don't know how to do this. You can fix it with activity. And I kept saying, OK, good. You said that on one of my early calls, like I think it was in March 2019. Right. And so I said, OK, and I almost threw up my first sale. Remember, I almost like. Had to go out to the car and take a breather and go back into the house. <laughs> and Scott's like, okay, you didn't throw up. Yes, Esther. I was so afraid. Like, what's the matter with me? And then I came out and I made $1,500. I was like, this is good. This is good. Right. And what is it? Like three weeks later, I did the same thing and over and over and over again, being in houses for three to five hours. And I, was, and I, and I found out later it was only supposed to be like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, but I got five apps. So you didn't care. So anyways, long story short, be coachable, put in the activity, be willing to work, work ethic. That's it. I love it. Well, thanks so much. There's, there's absolutely no question why your team is growing as fast as it, as it is. So thanks for your words of wisdom. We'll have to have, we'll have to get back on here and talk about building uh, cabins in Alaska and, and oh, then relocating to Florida. <laughs> and you know what? I have to just say hats off to my team. I have the best team ever. And I know Elliot and Ruth think that about their team too, but you know, we all, we really do. And I think it's tribute to you and Kelly. I was thinking about that one last thing, Scott. We are so different. Elliot, me and Ruth, right? Except Ruth and I talk a lot. She talks more than I do, but she has a lot more to say too. But anyways, you really, your gift is you take us wherever we are, the little bad news bears, and you help us figure out how to find ourselves. And I couldn't feel more grateful for your ability to do that. Cause even though we followed and you found people that are willing to be mentored, it was you that has led us to where we're at. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. I love you guys. Love yeah. you too. Good stuff. Thank you so okay, much. Sure. I want to see the dog. <laughs> All right, mic drop. Kelly, uh, we should probably do some walk-up music. This girl is on fire here. Oh, for geez, here. yeah. Ruth Slingo, she is, um, professional hair braider. So if you were to sit in front of her in class or a meeting, she would probably want to braid your hair. Or if you have a 13 year old daughter around <laughs> every time 
We have an event and our kids are there. My daughters both have beautiful braids, thanks to you. Um, we call her Aunt Ruth. She comes from a large family and she has made our agency a family. She really um, pours her heart and soul into this company and you know, her training with her agents, um, not only does she pour in her knowledge, but she lets people move in with her. <laughs> she, she goes above and beyond Ruth Slingo. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ruth Slingo, real quick here too, with some numbers, I'll just repair it back what Brandon said earlier, 40,000 in January, $100,000 a month in March. Um, you know, you guys are on the move. You're gonna be you know, on a run rate to do a million dollars this year. Uh, you're going to you're going to break out at least one agency owner by the end of the year. Uh, so this girl is on fire, Ruth. Oh, my. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. I'm Ruth Slingo, director, obviously, Scott and Kelly, Kevin Purdy and Lynn Watkins. God, I just love this company. I love everything about it. Um, you know, Kevin and Michelle introduced me to this company a long time ago, and um, it took me a long time to come around kind of like you, Scott. And um I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I was waiting for. I was waiting for, like, I loved what I did, uh, interior design, 25 years, and then life changed. You know, um, I'm one of nine kids, and um, my little brother, Daniel, was um, healthy until the day that he went to the hospital with a stomach ache, and he ended up with a mass in his colon at 36 years old, and full-fledged colon cancer, and um, that that turned my world upside down. I, I'm number two in the birth order. He was number five. So um, I gave up being a mom of four kids. I'm, my kids are still there. Everything was still fine. Everyone was taken care of, but I was an interior designer working 90 hours a week and I just couldn't do it anymore. And I had heard about this opportunity prior to that. And then when my life situation circumstances changed, I was like, I really need, need to be able to have some time to not have the regrets to be able to be with my family. And that's what happened. And the most amazing thing is um, I was there. I was the primary caregiver for my little brother, Daniel. And as soon as I started, I told Daniel what I was doing. And he was like, oh my gosh. He was like, are you really making money? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And every time I'd be in the field helping a family, um, I'd call Daniel as soon as I finished writing an app when I was going to my next appointment, I'd be like, Daniel, guess what? I just helped another family. Can you believe it? He was like, sis, this is awesome. You're doing amazing. And um, he said, we're going to keep this our secret because my family being an interior designer and working and supporting other people, building their dreams, I didn't really have the same belief that I could own it, that I could do something for myself. And seeing what Kevin and Michelle have built for their family coming in and aligning myself with you and Kelly, who have done nothing but give me support and encouragement and guidance and strength, even when I was having the most horrible struggles of my life with my family and trying to put into perspective, you know, you can't buy life at the end of the day. And my family was true result of that. No matter how much hundreds of thousands of dollars we spent, we lost Daniel, February 1st, 2019. Through the whole entire time, Kevin and Michelle, you and Kelly were there um, I remember when Daniel was going away to Mexico for some special treatments, I was like, I can work. I've got this couple months. I don't have to be in the hospital every night. You were guys were pushing me. You were like, okay, great. Let's get you your GMR turned on. Let's get you going. Let's do recruiting. Let's get you building. And every time I would get geared up, life would happen. So my journey took a little longer to become an agency owner. But at the end of the day, all I did was put my head down and follow the guidance and the leadership and the encouragement that you guys put in front of me. So um, my journey started out with the transition from interior design, 25 years to being a primary caregiver for my little brother to coming in. And while I was in the hospital, I never stopped recruiting. Um, Daniel would say, don't you have a conference call? I'd be like, yes. He's like, put it on speaker. Let's do this. He'd say, you know, in between the surgeons and the people, he would say, don't you, don't, you said you had some interviews, you need to do some interviews. And I was like, yes. So I put it on speaker and Daniel would hear me talk to them. And, and he said, you know, always how proud he was of me. And I remember, I'll never forget um, when Daniel passed away, you guys were there at that funeral. Kevin and Michelle came up. We're talking about leadership, guys. We're talking about support. We're talking about what makes Scott and Kelly become direct to symmetry. 
It's all about their passion, the way that they've helped the people, the way that they've allowed themselves to grow into amazing mentors and leaders and encouraging us all along the way, giving us guidance and strength and just being there alongside us like Sherpers, you know, never belittling, always encouraging. And that is just amazing as what happened. You, Kevin and Michelle and a bunch of agency owners and other agents showed up at that funeral. I'll never forget. My family was touched and blessed by it. And in turn, you know, I put my head down. I told you, Scott, I said, okay, Daniel's gone, but Daniel doesn't want me to stop. Four months later, I was agency owner. And let me tell you, it's first time I got that cell when I got back in the house, Daniel passed February 1st, February 9th was the funeral. February 21st, I was back in the home. I had to hire a driver because I was dealing with some severe neck injuries. And I hired a driver taking me to the houses. And I remember getting in my car coming back and I was like, there's no Daniel to call. Scott called Scott. And Scott, you said, Daniel is so proud of you right now. You got this, you got this. And we just kept sticking it out together. And I have an amazing running buddy, my husband, Pat Slingo, and, and all the people on our team are just absolutely amazing. But at the end of the day, you know, leaders develop leaders. And the, and the culture here is absolutely amazing. And the belief and the passion, if you can just transfer that to one person, we say it like this, Daniel Paul Bennett, he helped people with passion and purpose. And that's what I wanna to strive to do here at Symmetry. And that's just what I've always been about. And you guys have helped me get there. That's awesome, Ruth. Yeah, I, I've loved yeah. the trajectory of your growth here. And um, I know Kelly wanted to mention something, you know, this is something we, we talked about like the, you know, kind of like invisible growth that happens, you know, the, in my analogy to the tree and, um, and being able to share that, you know, I remember, you know, just, just a year ago, like I need you at this meeting, I need you at this meeting. And, and then, you know, you called me a month or so ago, or maybe a little bit longer. And you were like, Hey, I'm doing a meeting by the way. I'm like, Oh, okay. Where at Alabama. Right. And you go, and you go to this, me this meeting and you were like, you know, you walked in amongst your people and you were like, you know, now you know how it feels like when I come to a meeting, right? Um, lead, learning how to follow before you can lead. And you're like, I just can't believe the reaction I'm getting that I, I've made I've made this trip. And that's just impact. That's what you've been able to do just by following, you know, and, and now that's turned you into the leader. I listened to you on a conference call today. I'm telling you, I was like, the interview that you were doing with uh, the, this young lady, uh, Latanya was amazing. And, you know, it's just, it's just a result of following that system. So uh, Kelly? Yeah, I was just gonna say uh, the other day, Scott and I were talking about Daniel's service and you know, we didn't know Daniel. Um, and during the service, we found out a lot about Daniel and um, the fact that he would just bring home strangers um, that, that had no one, had nowhere to go. Um, and I see that now in you uh, with agents, with new people coming in. That's that's your passion and your purpose. And it comes from Daniel, you know, you're bringing in people and making them feel like they belong here and that they have a purpose. And um, I love that, just the passion in that and, and investing, that's what we talked about earlier, investing in the people and, and making them feel special. Um, I love all the names you have for your team, Wonder Woman and Green Machine. And it's just so fun. Um, it's just awesome. Just love your journey here. It's been amazing to watch. It's so cool. You know, my family says something happened when Daniel passed because I was the primary caregiver for a year and a half before he passed. And I'm like, yeah, I got the torch. I got the torch. You know, helping families with insurance, my brother had none. You know, I'm one of nine kids where we have a great, strong family. My, my family is very blessed. We were able to pull together. Um, I left my house in Frederick in Northern Virginia, moved down to take care of my brother's house, but so my parents didn't have to lose it because they got the house and there was no life insurance, no mortgage protection, no anything. And I feel like insurance today can be that last act of love. And so really, really, when we found out about Daniel, there was nothing we could do. But at the end of the day, I get to go help all those families and helping people with insurance, but helping people see their potential and their growth opportunity and see the value in themselves and see them the way that I see them as amazing people that are going to be able to have limitless opportunities if they just want it and are able to dream. So I love to help people create their dreams. And you guys started that with me. So thank you, Kevin, Michelle. Thank you, Scott and Kelly. I love you guys so much. Thanks.
Well, there's also one more thing. There's a line that you use and only you can say it. Um, I'd like you to please grace everyone in symmetry land with, with that line. We're the hottest. Oh, the hottest agency in symmetry. <laughs> Woo well, we love you too, Ruth. I just want to say thanks again to the founders, Todd, and um, you know everyone else that put this all together and allowed us to come and pour into you today. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, and uh, Todd, Thanks, man. I appreciate it again. And, um, you know, um, go ahead and sign off. We're going to say, hey, let's go make it happen this week. Everyone have an awesome week. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the leaderboards. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good one. See ya.